Left oar gets in the water and turn, so the club's up here. Now as TJ makes the transition, right oar gets in the water, so the club gets over here. And then from here as he turns, doot, 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 there's impact. So now based on what the ribs, what the spine, those fascial lines are doing, you're actually controlling where the club is moving in space. Yeah. Uh, we're somehow talking about golf today with oars and ropes. Yep. <laughs> this is awesome because this gets like big time into like big body global perspectives on, on movements. I think before we even get into ropes, the ropes are our favorite for a couple of different reasons because we you have to be dynamic with it. You can never stop in a position. But just to get general pictures going, I think this would be a really great place to start. I'm sure a lot of folks have seen what we call boat drill or boat exercise. Yep, exactly. So in general, TJ's body is the hull of the boat and we've got two oars sticking out either side here. So we can go two different ways and this is all based on kind of some spiral line stuff fascial lines, but let's show an over pattern. So in essence, what you're gonna do, let's put the right oar in the water. And what TJ just did, he did that based on, on spine bend. So in his thoracic spine, excellent. All that TJ did is bent, exactly. And you'll probably feel this in a number of different ways. You'll probably feel it primarily in ribs. These ribs clunk together and these ribs work away from one another. Mm -hmm. It's almost like an accordion. Boom, there you go. So in essence, if we go back to this boat drill again, hull of the boat, oar, oar, and the water line would be just underneath the oar. Throw the right oar in the water. There you go. And now throw the water at me. There you go. Now left oar in the water, water at me. Now go ahead and do it dynamic. Boom, boom, boom. So TJ's boat would be going towards the camera right now. Okay, now is that golf swing? No. Why not? Creates an over-the-top pattern. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Okay. So I'll be the, the guy in the back here doing the same thing. So notice the pattern that we're creating, right, Teach The club's under the plane, then it goes over the plane, across. Yep. Under the plane, over the plane. So that's that same... That's the same swim, yeah. Forward moving yeah. boat. So in the water you're paddling forward exactly okay exactly Got okay it. perfect so now let's show unders so right or in the water again go right or in the water good now throw the water towards the camera Ooh, there we go left or in the water water towards the camera good now do it dynamic there we go so now tj's boat would be coming back towards me away from the camera right and that would be instead of our freestyle look we're backpedaling Boom, 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 yep. right? So if you keep doing that, I'll show it in the background here. So we're going under, 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 under. So it's on top of the plane, under the plane, out. On top, under, out. Whoosh. So it's a different figure eight. I think that's a great place to start. And if we really tied that into golf swing, go ahead and face the camera if you could. Okay, if we went back swing, in general, the left oar kind of gets in that water. Mm -hmm. And as you're doing cool sacrum stuff and pelvis stuff, now we could get the right oar looking to get in the water and now throw the wave of water towards the target. Got it. So there's the turn. So we've got backswing, transition with the right oar. Now you're in total right bend and then into impact, bang, good. Now let's go down the line. So if you can just imagine folks where the golf club would be, Okay, left oar gets in the water and turn, so the club's up here. Now as TJ makes the transition, right oar gets in the water, so the club gets over here. And then from here as he turns, doot, 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 there's impact. So now based on what the ribs, what the spine, those fascial lines are doing, you're actually controlling where the club is moving in space yeah. because of that. You're yeah, not cool. having to do a whole lot with your arms and hands mm -hmm. to try to maneuver the golf club around. So. A dowel, yes. a golf club. If you don't have any of those around, you can just sit here and do it with your body, right? Yep, exactly. So if I just put this right here, it's in front. At some point, it kind of gets over here. So that's on the blade. Yep. Right where it gets in the water. Turn, boom. 
Now you can make shapes. The big thing, you're not doing it with the pelvis. No. So it's not this crud. We see this a lot. So that pelvis is staying back underneath you. Why pelvis you is staying this? back underneath. So we're gonna take a go to phrase. Okay. We're gonna call this back chain dominance. Okay. Back chain dominance is simply speaking, the pelvis is behind the rib cage. Okay. So I'm pressuring the pelvis back here as the ribs can fall forward. And you'll even feel the muscles in your back activate so I'm not just falling forward. Mm -hmm. Front chain would be pelvis in front of the ribs. So it's this action, like an ab exercise is front chain dominance, the uh -huh. abs contract. So we're softening these, boom. Now I got chain. glutes activated, I got cords activated, lats, back chain, posterior. Okay. Okay, so we're continuing to pressure this back as we're making this exercise. So just learning again, or right or in the water, push the water forward. See, I'm keeping the pelvis back. Mm -hmm. Left or in the water, push the water forward. So I'm continually managing the pelvis, pushing this back as I'm making this shape. So you'll feel it all up in like the thoracic spine or upper spine region. So I see your pelvis bouncing, but it's just getting deeper and deeper. It's never going this Exactly. Way, right? So you'll see the bounce because as I go this way, so it wants to pull me mm -hmm. into extension. So as I'm feeling that, I'm just bouncing this back. So you'll see, boom, this fights me to get into extension, which eventually we do go into extension because as I get this into the, into the water, push the water, push the water, keep driving to push the water forward. So that makes this right hip socket yeah, it go does. into extension. Yeah. So eventually you, you can't help it, especially at higher swing speeds. Like the more energy that you put into it, you're eventually gonna go into extension. But through this little area, this was really interesting. You said since the inclination is to just do this, yep. we're making this shape, you almost like just stretch against that inclination, right? Exactly, back chain, back that's chain, back chain. Back that's chain. where you see the bounce. Yep, exactly. Okay. So you're bouncing because you're constantly pressuring back. See, I'm just like pushing that back. Swim, 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 swim. <laughs> Hell yeah. Back, <laughs> deep, deep, right? Yeah. Okay, and we're showing this, we've done a lot of this, so like you can see us kind of play with it a little bit. You'll start to earn that right as you do this more and more. But this is the starting point. We don't start with ropes because ropes force you to get into dynamics. Okay. Like I can't throw the rope up here and the rope stays there. Like I do this. Yeah. Oh, stayed, cool. Fair enough. I can see where am I at in space, how can I move from there. So you can go through mm -hmm. that exercise really slowly, getting a feel for each step of the movement, bonk, right? Bonk. Bonk, bonk. You can't necessarily do that with a rope because if I do that here, this thing is just gonna... It just falls to the ground. Fall down, so, okay, exactly. gotcha. We love the rope. David Weck is the gentleman who came up with some of the rope stuff that we really, really like because okay. you see really cool stuff in the ribs, the scaps, the spine, like this whole system, how it really works, how it's working together. And then that pairs really well in with what we just talked about, which is where the club is working in space, especially in this like transition phase and then how it gets into the strike. Mm -hmm. Just helps tremendously. For sure. So go ahead and just start swinging the rope and then I'll, I'll do my best to explain what the heck it is that you're doing. <laughs> in the pelvis back, there you go. Yep, awesome. Now, what you see Tej doing right here is he is swinging the rope. It, again, this is under. So where would he be throwing the energy? The energy is being thrown under so it's, it was going towards the camera, so it's away from him. So you can still see that general shape of the blade that we were working with before, the oars, mm -hmm. where it's going underneath and out this way, mm -hmm. right? So showing over. So this is not golf swing. You can see where the energy gets thrown. It's getting thrown towards the screen behind him. So that's an over pattern. So that's club under the plane, over the plane to the ball. That's not golf swing. No. Right? So what's really important, like as, as, as guys get going here too, it's fine to let the arms like shoot some energy into the rope, see how the arms are doing it. I'm not doing anything in here yet. I love what you were talking about, which is pushing the pelvis back. I like newer, newer guys, almost everybody to have head up too, because now my C spine is up here. So now I've got back chain for sure. The more that I look down, I get in this kind of a look, which mm -hmm. is front chain. So back chain, columns narrow, meaning feet are close together. Uh, heels work away from one another slightly. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are all go to terms. That's H A A D, mm -hmm. heels away all day. Inside ankle bone then gets high, I A, -A B H, inside ankle bone high. Mm -hmm. 
okay? And back chain, so head up. So now I'm gonna throw, like if I just did this only with the arms, you see the arms like I'm kind of throwing it at a 45. Well, I'm just putting energy in the rope. Once I throw it out here, I'm gonna catch it with the ribs. So I can go one toss and then catch with the ribs. Now from here, notice how I'm not doing anything with the arms. It's all in this same like big ribs, ribs, or in the water, shoot the water, or in the water, shoot the water. Boom, boom, mm -hmm. boom. What's fun with this too? Lots of energy. Chill it, chill it. Dynamic, dynamic. Push the pelvis back, 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 all in the ribs. So this would be a cheat. Yeah. On the You're arms. Just doing that with your arms, yeah. Ribs, 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 ribs. Okay. Got and it. it helps tremendously with what we like to see too. Like, go ahead and start swinging the rope again, Tej. We talk about Bracky puts it really well, Luke Bracky. Woo. Woo. Every time there's a woo, that's a shot of energy, like you're putting energy into the system. See how chilled it gets? Whoosh. The whoosh is a little bit of rib fire. Woof. So I'm pushing water. There you go. So the chill is the time to get the ore in the water. Then the woo, the energy burst, is moving the water. So when the ore is out of the water, into the water, that's your chill time. And then you shoot. Woom. Boom, boom, there it is. So now do the same system, keep pushing the pelvis back, throw it, show us more energy, like bust one. And it's not in the arms, it's all in the ribs, all in the ribs, more energy, come on, hum it. That's cool, now chill it out. There you go. So now you're actually learning to play with energy, which ah. is what you need to be able to do as a golfer. Got it, yep. If you're a high level golfer, and you've got 140 into a green, into the wind, you need to be able to pitch a seven iron in there so that you lower trads, you lower spin and control the golf ball. Super low energy. Super low energy. If yep. it's downwind, you can freaking, if you're a big strong dude, you're ripping seven iron from 220 sometimes and you're putting more energy in, and higher this is, launch. This is something I see everywhere, but maybe more particularly junior golf. Mm -hmm. It's like, a lot of these kids don't know how to operate at that low energy. Everything is full send, 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 send. So the question is why? Think about, um, Guys that are on a unicycle going along a tightrope. Okay. If they're going slow pedals, it's gonna be it wobbles. A nightmare to get on the tightrope. Exactly. Yep. So speed helps angular force stay on plane. Got it. So if it's so much easier to like whoop, it just shoot, it's like a cheat. Okay. Hitting it with speed shoots the energy out. That's where the golf ball is. Cool. Uh -huh. Doing one at this pace, you better be able to control where the instrument is in space. Okay, I understand. Speed's a cheat code. Yep. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> but you don't hit wedges like that. Like, no. And I think that's kind of why in some instances, a lot of players will go to the range and they prefer unconsciously to hit six iron to driver rather than wedges. Because they hit these wedges that just kind of, they don't feel compressed or kind of wiped off. They just get in the air and kind of float around. It just doesn't feel good. It's because they have way too much speed in the system. Ah. So it shoots the energy out, high ball, Super high trage, low spin, feels gross. Nobody likes to do things they aren't good at, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> and operating at slower speeds is, is more difficult. Challenge. Yeah. But the best players in history, that's how they generally operated. Mm -hmm. Hogan is famous for making two minute long golf swings on the range. Yep. <laughs> Imagine how long two minutes is. That's so long, I can't even picture yeah. it. Yeah, show like... us a 10 second golf swing. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, get the picture. <laughs> it takes forever. Like yeah. that would not be fun because you have to really organize things yeah. at a super high level if you're going to flush one out. It'd go a foot, mm -hmm. but to hit it right in the middle of the face, that's hard to do at that pace. That's right. It's a great way to operate. But this gives you better understandings of how to control energy in your system so that you can hit the appropriate shots. It's fantastic. Okay. Okay. Now, because I have to talk about it, there was tons of comments on the last one I put out. Dragon rolls. Dragon rolls. Yep. Okay. Um, they asked me to explain what the heck was going on there, and I honestly have, don't know. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay. Yep. So, so let's do it actually, Tej, because it's, it's great for sacrum. Okay. So face the screen. Sacrum, tailbone, is this bone right here? Okay. Sp spine, 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 L spine, bum, bum, bum. sacrum's like the big bone right here, right in front of his pelvis. Okay. So as you start um, showing dragon rolls, 
you'll notice where TJ's sacrum moves. So a waist swing was right there, the sacrum moves towards the target. The forward swing right there, the sacrum moves away from the target, which is awesome. Like it helps so much. And what he's doing, the more that he can stay in back chain, the easier it'll be for him. There you go. Good. <laughs> it's all good. It's hard exercise. It hard exercise. It's nice to actually see like us screw this up because it's a difficult exercise. What it does too is it maintains like back chain dominance is the, is the ribs always being in front of the pelvis. Okay, and it's difficult to see this sometimes because we're rotating in space. So right, now freeze. TJ's ribs are in front of the pelvis, meaning he is rotated towards the screen. So his ribs should be this side of his pelvis. Hip flexion keeps his pelvis back towards the, towards the uh, camera. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden that showcases sacrum move, back chain dominance because the ribs are in front of the pelvis right here. That's awesome. Okay, most of the time when we're looking at back chain dominance, we're just talking about setup. Well, this would not be back chain dominance through the strike. See how no. the pelvis raced out, the ribs are falling back. Mm -hmm. Try to do a drag and roll that way. Well, that ain't gonna work. For well, let's see, let's see if you can do it. It ain't, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work at all. No. So it teaches maintenance of back chain during motion, mm -hmm. which is great. So if I'm doing a drag and roll and going toss it over, See how the ribs are still forward of the pelvis there. Yeah. Now it doesn't teach a whole lot of bends. We throw a little bend in and now I look like a golfer. Okay. But as far as back chain dominance, sacrum move, lateral rib mobility, rib sway. Yeah. It teaches all of that. All of it. It's okay. just missing a little bit of bend. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's kind of explain how to do, how to do uh, um, drag these and dragon roll. rolls, okay. right? So we're starting narrow columns again, same, uh, same uh, global pieces here throw the rope over here to this side. So you just throw it over to your trail side. Look at that beautiful back chain. That's awesome. Ribs are this side. The sacrum already moved this way, which is great. Mm -hmm. Now what TJ is going to do, just show drag it under you and then toss it over your head. That's the start. Okay. Okay. So do that again, just to start this. So just to start this, we're there, drag it and throw it over just like a jump rope. Excellent. Now, all that's going to happen to get it back over here to the start, go back to the original position. So once, once he throws it over, he's gonna turn. So drag, over, turn, there you go. So now the rope falls behind him and then he could throw it back over again. And now guess what? You're back to the original starting position. Huh. So if you just do that in, in pieces where we go, drag over as it's going over, you're going over here back to the original starting position. There you go. So all that's missing is you tossing the rope back over. Got it. So let's just show one drag and roll. Under, over, turn over. Okay. Under, over, turn, back over. There you go. Now, and now you're back to the original starting position. So all you'd have to do is just continue to go back through that again. Boom, boom, boom. And now we're swinging. Because it's trippy, like watching it, you're like, how's that happening? It looks like a magic trip. <laughs> it does. Yeah. And, ooh, now let's really test it. Can you go the other way with it? Wait, what? <laughs> so you started right side. So this would be like a left-handed Could you golf start thing? left side? Whoop. No, I think I just cheated. No, that was good. That no, was, that was good. That was right. it. So under, over, over, boom, 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 boom. Excellent. So that's like backswing and then you gotta uh -huh. follow through. Yep, exactly. And all, again, all it is missing is bends. Sure. Back chain, pelvis back, I mean, boom, it's, it's missing bends, ribs. but there's other things to work on that. And this is a, a wonderful way to understand how the ribs and pelvis need to work together, right? 100%. And I think what's even better is like, we, our game from an instructional standpoint, we just like to piece things together. It needs to be here at P5. It needs to be there at P3. The head needs to be outside the hands. There's, it's all taught from a positional standpoint. Mm -hmm. Positions are beautiful, but the positions should happen because you're moving in and out of space really well. It's a dynamic move. Mm -hmm. Our, a golf swing is super dynamic and you better be able to feel those dynamics in an efficient way mm -hmm. if you're gonna command ball flight. At the end of the day, we wanna stand over it and go, I know right where that thing is going. And then the actual physical act is this deja vu moment. That's what we want. Yeah. So we should all dump into that. 
Well, that's dynamics. You're not going to feel that by going perfect P2, perfect P3, yeah. perfect P4. Da, 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 da. Even if you hit all the nice positions that we prefer to see, mm -hmm. it's going to feel gross down here. Yep. I went through that period. I went through the P the period. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's exactly. like, I want to make everything look perfect. But if you don't understand how to like flow through those things, mm -hmm. golf ball's not going to feel very good. Exactly. Which is what we're looking for at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So get yourself um, something stick like, even if it's a golf club, totally fine. You start to marry those swim kind of boat exercises together so you understand how you're moving. As you get more accomplished with it, the rope is a great, great place to go. This rope is about, uh, I would get about an eight foot rope, six, eh, seven to eight feet yeah, if you're about like six that. foot tall, which we are, because you can always choke it down. Like I always choke it down to, to, to the point where the rope is right here, my arms are slightly bent, okay. get in a back chain and then start swinging it and it should just barely touch the ground each time that you, that you throw a rope. Okay, got it. Um, that will help tremendously. Um, but that's, again, just a great way to get into the dynamics of the golf swing and start to feel some energy, especially in the rib and pelvis system. Love it. Main engine, baby. Main engine stuff. Awesome. That was good. Ask any questions that you have. See you next week.